proposition is Proposition 58, which gives local control on how schools want to go about teaching English to non-English speakers. Since 1998, non-English speakers students were forced into English-only classrooms. This proposition will repeal the law of forcing non-English speakers into English-only classrooms and give the decision to local schools. Arguments in favor of this proposition are that it gives control to local schools and the town on what route they want to take to addressing non-English speaking students and how they want to teach those kids English. It also expands opportunities for English speakers to learn a second language early on in elementary school. Arguments against this proposition include, with this proposition passing, Spanish-speaking families might be forced into Spanish-only classrooms that they don't necessarily want their kids to be in. People against this proposition also argue that the 100% English-only immersion has worked since 1998 and we should keep it that way because it's effective. People for this proposition include the Senior Vice President of the California Federation of Teachers, the president of the California School Boards Association, and the executive director of the California Language Teachers Association. People against this proposition include the chairman for English for the Children, which was the proposition passed in 1998, and the former superintendent of Oceanside Unified School District. The next proposition is Proposition 59, and this proposition is merely in advisory vote to the government. It doesn't have any legal impacts. There's no laws changing or being enacted. It's merely the government getting a citizen's opinion on the Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission case. So a yes vote on Proposition 59 would mean that you want Citizens United repealed. Citizens United is when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that spending limits of corporations are unconstitutional because it impedes on corporations' First Amendment rights of free speech. People in favor of this proposition argue that we need to tell the government corporations and billionaires should not be allowed to buy our elections and to just pour money into certain politicians and legislatures and bills that favor them. And people argue that since the Citizen United ruling, corporations have had too much influence on politics um, to favor themselves and it's led to the creation of super PACs where companies can donate to politicians with no transparency and no disclosure. People against this proposition say this proposition is a waste of taxpayer time and money. There's no legal impact to this, it's just an advisory. Um, another argument against it is that it imposes on the First Amendment, which is our freedom of speech. People that support this proposition, the co-founder of Money Out Voters In, the executive director of California Common Cause, and state senator Ben Allen. People that oppose this proposition is state senator Jeff Stone and state assemblyman Cacho Achadion. Achadion. And a state assemblyman from the 35th district. Alright, the next proposition is Proposition 60, which would require porn stars to wear condoms in porn. People in favor of this proposition say that it protects workers in the porn industry against STDs and life-threatening diseases like HIV AIDS. They also note that Cal OSHA already requires employers to protect their employees from bloodborne pathogens, which would include AIDS, but they kind of turn a blind eye to porn and don't enforce it, and there exists a bunch of loopholes that the porn industry can get around to not using condoms. So this proposition would close these loopholes and keep workers safe at their jobs. Requiring condoms to be worn in porn also is a great sex education for young people who see porn as their first ever exposure to 
sex and it will better teach kids to use condoms when they do become sexually active. Arguments against this proposition are that this proposition is just to push the porn industry out of LA because with this new condom requirement the porn filmmakers will just move out of California to make their films or go underground because they won't want to make porn with condoms and it won't solve the problem. Also people argue that the porn industry is already very strict on STD and AIDS transmission by testing their workers before every shoot. People that support this proposition are the board chair of AIDS Healthcare Foundation, the former director of Los Angeles County Sexuality Trans Sexually Transmitted Disease Program, and HIV an HIV positive former adult film worker. People that oppose this proposition, both the California Democratic Party and the California Republican Party, and oddly enough, the San Francisco AIDS Foundation and AIDS, the AIDS Project in LA. Proposition 61 will prohibit state agencies from buying prescription drugs from a drug manufacturer that is at a higher price than what the Department of Veteran Affairs pays for. The VA usually has the lowest cost drugs, so this proposition is an effort to lower drug prices for California. Arguments in favor of this proposition say that this is a stand against Big Pharma and their priority to make money and profit over the health of California citizens. So they argue that this proposition will lower drug prices, prescription drug prices, and make it easier for California citizens to buy these necessary drugs that they need for their health. And people argue that this takes power away from big pharma companies. Arguments against this proposition are that it may actually force drug companies to raise prices for the, vet the veteran affairs, which will in turn keep prices high for state agencies. People that support this proposition are the co-president of the California Nurses Association, the state director of AARP California, and the chair of the California Democratic Party. People that oppose this proposition are the commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars Department of California, vice chair Latino Diabetes Association, and the president of the California Association of Rural Health Clinics. So the next proposition is Proposition 62, which would repeal the death penalty and replace that prisoner's sentence with life imprisonment without possibility of parole. This would apply retroactively to people who have been um, put on death row. And it would increase portions of these inmates' wages that, would, that may be applied to victim restitution or the debt that they owe the the victim's families. So arguments for this proposition are just the normal arguments against the death penalty. A lot of innocent people get put on death row on accident. It costs a lot of money to keep prisoners on death row in prison until they are executed because they're in solitary confinement, they're co accompanied by one or two guards at all times, and it costs a lot more to imprison death row inmates than life imprisonment inmates. And there hasn't been an execution in California in 10 years because of all the appeals and court hearings. There's too many cases and not enough lawyers or judges to hear the cases. Another complicated issue is that there, ha there are four drug cocktails that have been approved for executions but two of which are off the market and aren't available anymore, and the other two have never been used before. People in favor of this proposition say that it will save taxpayers $150 million a year. Arguments against this proposition include the normal arguments for, for death row and execution of a very high and cruel crimes. People argue that child murderers, rapists, and serial killers, torture killers, all of these heinous crimes done by heinous people deserve to be executed. People against this proposition also claim that it won't save taxpayer money because we will be imprisoning these people until they die of old age. 
and and we would be obligated to provide expensive treatment for them when they are old, such as heart transplant. People for this proposition include a former death row warden, many family members of murder victims, and surprisingly, the author himself of the California death penalty law. People that oppose this proposition are the district attorney of San Bernardino County, um, many family members of murder victims, and the president of the Peace Officers Research Association of California. Next is Proposition 63, and this proposition would create all-around stricter checks on ammunition and firearms. People in favor of this proposition say that we need to take action now on preventing gun violence, especially with all the recent attacks in Dallas, Orlando, San Bernardino, etc. And this proposition will make it harder for criminals and people with history of gun theft and gun violence to obtain firearms and ammunition. It will strengthen the background check check required before buying guns. It will, it will require businesses to... People against this proposition say that this won't help keep our citizens safer because terrorists don't follow the law and people that want to inflict gun violence won't follow this law and they'll find a way to obtain their guns and to kill people if they really, really want to. People against this proposition say that it will divert resources and time away from law enforcement and overburden an already overcrowded court system. It will turn law-abiding citizens into criminals and it infringes on the right to bear arms in the Constitution. People that support this proposition include the Lieutenant Governor of California, a United States Senator, and the executive director of law, of the Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence. People opposed to this proposition include the president of the California State Sheriff's Association, the chief executive officer of California, Reserve Peace Officers Association, and the principal officer at the Coalition for Civil Liberties. So the next proposition is Prop Proposition 64 proposing to legalize marijuana. Those in favor of this proposition say that marijuana is already readily available across the state. We might as well regulate it, make sure it's safe, make sure kids and teens aren't getting it, and tax it to make revenue off of it. They also argue that it will keep a lot of people out of prison that have been charged with possession of marijuana. People against the proposition, this proposition is not strict enough. There's not enough enough regulation of marijuana if it were to be legalized. They say that people will be allowed to grow marijuana up to six plants right next to a school. There's no regulation against proximity to schools. People say that it will increase, not decrease, the black market and drug cartel activity of marijuana. It could unleash a lot of television ads for marijuana that children see. People for this proposition include the former chief of chronic disease and injury control in the California Department of Public Health, the executive director of Parents for Addiction Treatment and Healing, and the former deputy chief of the Los Angeles Police Department. People against this proposition include Diane Feinstein, a United States Senator, the president of California Association of Highway Protection, or Highway Patrolmen, and the president of the California Hospital Association. <laughs> Thank you.